and welcome to our Gift Love Leads podcast, where we'll be delving into conversations being held across the city and learning more about how we can come together to create positive change for the communities that need it the most. Leeds Community Foundation distributes vital grants and gives trusted advice to voluntary groups and charities across Leeds and Bradford to influence positive change. Driven by creating meaningful social impact for thousands of local people every year, during 2020 and 2021, we've distributed 5.8 million across Leeds and Bradford. Today's host is Steph Taylor, Strategy and Programmes Director for Leeds Community Foundation. Hello, my name is Steph Taylor from Leeds Community Foundation. Welcome to episode four of the Give Love Leeds podcast. In this episode, we'll be looking at Leeds' thriving tech and digital sector and how we can work more collaboratively with them to share a passion and commitment to bring about a sustainable change across Leeds. Leeds' digital sector is currently the fastest growing in the UK and employs around 30,000 people who contribute 6.6 billion to the local economy. It has continued to thrive during the pandemic and is playing a vital role in the city's economic recovery. But not everyone is thriving in the world of digital. 10% of the adult population are not online at all, according to the Office of National Statistics, which is a staggering 5 million people. The pandemic highlighted issues of digital inequality in Leeds, access to or lack of internet and technological equipment, such as laptops and computers, led to children already at a disadvantage, falling further behind with their education. However, throughout the pandemic, we've seen fantastic initiatives spring up within our communities to tackle the digital divide. And I'll be talking to David Smith, trustee of Crossgates and District Good Neighbours Scheme, about their work. I'll also be interviewing Stuart Clark, co-founder of Leeds Digital Festival, to hear more about how we can collaborate with them to make social change across Leeds. But first, we'll hear from Ben McKenna, chief executive of Solidaritech, a community interest company that help refugees and asylum seekers gain access to technology. They work with businesses and individuals to help them donate tech, whether it be laptops, desktops, tablets or smartphones. Solidaritech was supported through our Healthy Holidays programme last year to supply donated laptops to digitally excluded children and young people across Leeds. Hi there, my name is Ben from Solidaritech and we run the Lead Tech Angels project, um, which was helping kids who were digitally excluded get access to technology using processes that we'd already built up over the last three or four years at Solidaritech. So in terms of key outcomes and what came out of it, I think the really amazing thing was that we managed to get by hook or by crook um, 200 machines ready for people. So we managed to refurbish north of 200, but um, around that sort of figure. It was an interesting one because originally we started with the intention of directly approaching businesses. But what we did find was that there were immense pressures on technology and specifically for businesses. So we were a little bit surprised and a little bit bowled over and really, really amazed by the amount of um, kind of punters, professional people, normal people from members of public that donated machines to us, which was absolutely fantastic. There were some great machines, there were some less great machines, and there were some random things like printers or DVD players and that sort of stuff. Even though we, you know, expressly didn't ask for those things, it was great that we actually got them. And, you know, people were really, really, really showing that they were interested in helping, which was absolutely fantastic. Weirdly enough, we we did actually suffer a break-in at one of our our drop-off locations, which was a challenge. But I think one of the, the nice things about that is it highlighted some of our I guess you could say some of our processes were right because actually when the break-in happened, it was the the only machines that went were machines that actually had all of the, the data removed by a company who had donated them to us. So there were over, I think, 100 machines went missing, something like that. And none of those machines had hard drives in them. And actually the, the really interesting thing is that that burglary helped raise the profile of the project. Then Leeds United got involved and the Yorkshire Evening Post, who were hugely helpful to us, helped us get Leeds United involved. And they helped us crowdfund to get replacement machines, brand new Chromebooks for replacing those ones that are missing, which was superb. Something that was really bold to say over to start with was was great. Then we had the issue with the burglary, which was absolutely devastating, um, both for the people that run the centre where the, the machines were dropped off, but also for us and the, the prospects of the project. And then we managed to get back to the point where we, we actually funded new purchases for all of those things. And all of those, that, that you know, all the way through the process there, 
it was the community of Leeds that were really, really helping us, which I think kind of gives you a flavour of the place, which obviously I'm not from, but also the community spirit around Leeds was, was tremendous and fantastic and something I was bowled over by. And it helped us get important stuff to people, which was, was fantastic. So yeah, it was a, a roller coaster of a project, but we got there in the end. So the funding from Leeds Community Foundation was hugely important. And, you know, I think a lot of grant giving bodies or a lot of, um, you know, organizations that do charitable grants and funding might have a different approach, but actually um, it was LCF approaching us for this in, in a lot of cases and wanted us to do this. And there were a lot of reaching out to try and work out what the project could look like. Um, we were in the middle of COVID. So I think that was, that was a real challenge for us. Um, but I think one of the amazing things is that every step of the way, LCF have been there to help us. Every step of the way, when we had a question, we had a representative from LCF ready to answer those questions and really supporting us. And it was really clear, like a lot of organizations that give grant funding are just like, our job's to give you the funding, you do what you need. But actually, we were helping other parts of, of the LCF family, I guess you would call it. So obviously the benefits were you know kind of contained a little bit but the the nice thing was is that the organization were really really helpful consultative friendly and you know a, a big part of setting up in the first place so it was a superb working relationship we had and something that we were really proud to be part of because obviously it wasn't a normal time it was a, a heavy time for everyone and the amount of support and i guess kind of family feeling a bit about everything that who we were helping how we were helping them was huge to us. So yeah, we, we couldn't have done it without LCF's involvement financially, but also, you know, emotionally and sort of empathetically, I think they were the huge things for us too. So I think the key take homes, the things that, that we've, I guess, learned from the project is that Leeds is a rare city in terms of the amount of community participation that takes place. And the strange thing as well is that obviously this was all branded Leeds. Leeds United were involved, Yorkshire Evening Post were involved, but it, it spread out across West Yorkshire, which I think was testament to the power of LCF. I guess there's obviously Give Bradford, which is a huge part as well, but it was wider than just Leeds and Bradford, places in Kirklees that were giving us machines. There were the places that we picked up up in the Dales. There were, there were loads of help from lots of really good people. Our work, I guess you could say, goes on. Um, it, we were, I guess, kind of very small before the, the pandemic and we're still small now. We've moved on a fair bit in terms of, of what we do and how we do it because we've learned from that and Tech Angels was a huge part of that. It opened doors for us to get into front of big businesses to help them recycle their technology. We're still receiving Tech Angels offers now, um, you know, a full sort of nine months after we, we launched the project over Christmas. So it's been huge for us. I think the, the, there are things that we can do uh, which is mitigate the issues of, the, of the, the digital divide. But I think the key thing for us is that it's still there. It's still an issue. Um, COVID hasn't gone away as much as we like to think it has. So there will be lockdowns, there will be kids that are isolated, and there will be more need for these devices. We've certainly seen it in the asylum refugee community, asylum seeker refugee community that we served beforehand and we continue to serve now that you know, the, with poverty comes digital exclusion for, for a lot of people. If it's a choice between eating and broadband or paying for a laptop, yeah, of course you're going to go for eating. You're going to go for heating. You've got to keep your kids fed and your kids warm. So I think the issue that we're set up to deal with hasn't gone away. And, you know, realistically, we can't solve that issue. We can just mitigate it for specific people. But I think we would like to, to take the, the, the project forward. We would like to spread things out wider. I think everyone is probably fatigued from, from the, the tough couple of years that we've had COVID wise. But I think the really important thing is the way that the community have come together, the way institutions in Leeds, you know, everyone from big businesses, financial services and legal businesses that really, really helped us out, tech businesses helped us out. And also, you know, sort of the institutions that, that I think we probably think of, of that Leeds has, you know, nationally, I guess. So, you know, th things like um, the, the Evening Post and the Yorkshire Post, things like Leeds United, those, those sort of things are really, really key to, to how we kind of go forward and how we build that model. I mean, I'm not a fan of the idea of big society, but it is nice that we do have the ability to do that between us, between all the parts of society, and we knit those things together. And, you know, we're only identifying waste here. So people like Zero Waste Leeds and people like that were hugely helpful of that, but we're only identifying a small part of the wastage that comes from everyday life or businesses or anything like that in terms of tech. So 
if we can root those items of technology to people um, to do a good thing and to you know stop people you know, maybe getting a payday loan or, or, or something that could be ruinous for them financially and i think that's a really good thing so yeah for us i think the main take home from the whole project was the the strength of community in leeds and you know, i think Leeds Community Foundation are a big part of that. They sit at the center of all of that and they knit together a lot of things. So yeah, we're hugely appreciative and we just want to carry on doing what we do because, you know, actually helping people out makes a huge difference to their lives. Thanks. We're now going to speak to David Smith, the trustee of Crossgates and District Good Neighbours Scheme. Crossgates and District Good Neighbours Scheme were funded through the Time to Shine programme to support and introduce older people to the benefits of using IT. Welcome, David. Tell us a little bit about your work, please. Thank you, Steph. Um, and I'd just like to say I'm, I'm very pleased to speak with Leeds Community Foundation now because they funded many projects and activities at Crossgates Good Neighbours. Uh, I'll just pick out uh, our lunch club, which you've funded for many years now. We, we provide uh, nice, uh, healthy, hot meals to about 60 other people every week, actually, and uh, with a proper sweet with lovely custard as well. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> over the pandemic, we've actually switched to delivering hot meals to people at home, actually. Well, of course, everyone understands nowadays that more and more things are going online. And there's lots of things that you can really only do or access online nowadays. And there's a great danger that some people, mainly older people, will become what's called digitally excluded because of that. So many older people have never had to use computers during their working lives. And, and so they, they may feel a bit anxious about technology. They may be scared by stories about online scams as well. So th they need a bit of gentle encouragement if, if they want to get online, really. They may feel they just don't want to engage with digital. But one actually positive effect of the pandemic and the lockdowns has mean, been to make many older people realise that they just had to take the plunge. And many of them have really flourished since that. So at Crossgates Good Neighbours, we've always had volunteers who would advise our members about how to use their tablets and smartphones. We've also had, always helped many of them to get blue badges or bus passes or with any applications that required online and that were beyond their own capabilities. Uh, that went up a gear in 2019 when we became the first digital health hub in Leeds. We achieved that with support from 100% digital Leeds and also from the Good Things Foundation, which is a major digital charity in Sheffield. I should mention here that Rachel Benn of 100% Digital Leeds is a really inspirational figure, not just in Leeds, but nationally, actually. And she's been behind a lot of what we've achieved. For example, she arranged for supplies of tablets for our learning classes. As a result of that, we now have a lend and buy scheme, so members can rent a tablet from us and eventually buy it if, if they want to. It's brilliant just to hear there about the different funding streams that you've had, you know, for your work. You mentioned Good Things Foundation, and I know a lot of our other community groups will be really, you know, interested to hear that and, and to hear a little bit more about that. And of course, everything you've um, you've partnered with us on at Leeds Community Foundation. So that's really helpful. I wouldn't, could you tell us a little bit more about the intergenerational aspects? Because you've talked there quite a bit about older people in the community. What involvement did younger people have? Well, yes, this comes on to the intergenerational project now. And I've been especially happy to take part in this project because across case with neighbours, we always try to engage with younger people. Personally, I've had an overseas student pen pal at Leeds Uni uh, every year for the past few years under wow. the writing back scheme. So, yes, so I'm really, it was really interesting for me. So, uh, as you said, uh, Seth, the project is targeted at older people who are complete internet novices. So they need a lot of time and care and encouragement to take the first steps in using tablets or smartphones. That's why our intergenerational project was set up with five weekly sessions and each session lasts a whole hour. So it gives plenty of time for some gentle teaching. It's so easy to put learners off by going over things too quickly so that they can't remember what they've been told and then they get despondent about everything. So it's really important to take the time to do it carefully. We paired up uh, one older person with one student. So each pair was given a tablet with uh, an internet connection. And the students began by just gently teaching the older people how to play games on the tablets. So they learned how to, how to do tapping and swiping, which, which they've never done before. So that's the first thing you need to know before you do anything else 
on a tablet or a smartphone, really. Yeah. We had some lovely college students, a so one university student on our first iteration. Um, I think that on future runs of the course, we'll have more university students as they come back for the new term, you know. All the, all the students were great, and with plenty of time to take, you know, they, they took everything very nice and slowly and played the games with the older people. And then on, on future weeks, they could move on to showing them different things about how to use tablets or smartphones. What kind of games did they play? They played one very easy crossword game where, where you had to swipe and choose um, the next appropriate word for the crossword. I forgot what it was called. I played it myself. But it was really nice and easy, but it was really good for showing them how to swipe and tap on the, on the tablet. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. Yes. So I was one of the older participants myself, actually, because you, know, you might not believe this, but I've got very limited working knowledge of tablets and smartphones myself. Um, I, I was actually a scientist, so I've been involved in computers even from the 1970s, even before the IBM PC and Microsoft came in. But I've never made the jump to smartphones myself. I've still got an old Nokia. <laughs> so I did actually learn a lot myself on that course. It was really very interesting, you know, doing it with a student as well. Yeah. Learning what the NHS COVID app looks like and things like that. Because obviously I've never done that. They, they don't realise that lots of people can't do that app because they don't have a smartphone. Tell me a little bit about how many other people there are in the community that, you know, that need this sort of help. What What is the need for these sessions? Well, there, there are plenty because um, with, with our digital um, coordinator and, and her digital volunteers, uh, during the pandemic, we, we trained, um, I think, well over 50, probably more uh, people just to be able to get onto Zoom. And, and, we, and we trained a lot more in IT and digital, where, where we've got uh, big programs now for IT and digital training. But, you know, during the pandemic, just to be able to get on Zoom was a big thing when people were shooting at home. Uh, and we set up a, a weekly program of digital activities, bingo, uh, quizzes. Coffee mornings at the start, although we've stopped those now. Uh, we've got uh, online exercise classes and uh, a, a book club as well. And they're still going, actually, because people really have appreciated them. And, of course, the great thing now is that now people know how to contact each other on Zoom. They'll be able to do things at evenings and the weekends, which are the loneliest times. But they're the times where full-time staff, really, we can't deploy them. So that's been one of the positive things about the lockdown. Um, that's fantastic to hear, you know, and I think that's that's been across the generations that people have found new ways to connect in different times and in different ways. You know, those virtual coffees are happening, virtual pubs are happening all over the city still, which is brilliant. I'm sure it's going to continue. And as I say, it's especially useful in evenings and weekends, especially for our older members. I think it's, it's going to be really good, actually. Could you tell us a bit about any key highlights or the impacts on any individuals? Well, yes, I was going to tell you that um, I, I do volunteer befriending with Cross Case Good Neighbours. Uh, that's on the SWIFT programme in Leeds. That's saying that people who are at risk of loneliness and isolation and also have particular health issues that contribute that, you know, prevent them from getting out by themselves and things like that. So my befriendee actually... Um, became another one of the participants on the course with me. So we could both go to the course. I could accompany him to the course. And also, he just got his own smartphone as well. So it was an ideal time for him to learn something about using the smartphone. And he had a great time meeting everyone. And uh, he really enjoyed the sessions with, with the students. They were really kind to him, actually. He was really good. Yes, so I think the intergenerational project is really meeting its its commitment to introduce these older people to the internet and get them started. Those who want to then can progress on to further IT training with Cross Case Good Neighbours. Uh, our digital coordinator has got a whole team of volunteers now who deliver digital training. It's it's one to one, either either online or one to one in our office now, because we're starting at one to one meetings again. Alternatively, they, they can just join our weekly digital program and, and enjoy the quizzes and book clubs and things like that uh, it's up to them really but a lot of uh, older people have really flourished with the um, digital un under the lockdown and um, we also have a, a media worker now called Ellie Dawson a, a journalism graduate who, who develops videos and and uh, interviews about our activities and our members actually 
she's put a, a lot of those on our new YouTube channel. At Cross Case of Neighbors, we've got a YouTube channel. You can find lots of videos on there. And also Samantha Haggard has, has made a, a whole series of training videos which show people in a very gentle way how to use Facebook, how to use Oh, Facebook. fantastic. And of course, the great thing about videos is you can go back and, and replay them and replay them just to make sure that you've learned properly. So yeah. the, the, if you look at our YouTube channel, you'll find that there's a whole host of videos there which people can use. We provide them for other neighbourhood networks as well, of course. There's lots of brilliant things happening in Leeds um, and obviously lots of fantastic work that you're doing at Crossgates and District Good Neighbours Scheme. What, what do you think are the gaps? You know, what, what still is the digital divide looking like? I think it's just a question of finding the people who are still digitally isolated, really. You know, just, fi- just finding them. It's the same as finding the um, disadvantaged people um, in- anywhere who haven't, who haven't connected with the statutory services at all. Uh, well, one good thing that happened with the uh, lockdowns, actually, was that through the um, the, the COVID helplines that, that um, Lee City Council instituted, they did get calls from people who hadn't been in touch with the services before just because they needed help. And they, they were referred on to us. So we, we've got quite a few new members through that, you know, uh, we wouldn't have found before. So that, that's been a good thing for us, actually. That's great. That's great. And, you know, community organisations, as we've heard so many times on the podcast, are really at the centre of that outreach and, and building connections in communities that lead to people being able to use statutory services and get and get other support. So it's brilliant to hear that come to life, David, in what you've been saying. It's been brilliant to chat to you. Just before you go, I would like to ask you about being a trustee because, um, you know, you talked about how you used some of the support available in the project, but you're also, you know, you're also on the board of the organisation as well. And um, lots of community groups we speak to struggle to get really brilliant trustees because it's a voluntary role, isn't it? And you've given up so much of your time for the organisation. What's what's that been like for you? Yes, it is voluntary. Um, I, I joined Cross Coast Good Neighbours um, after I'd, um, I'd been looking after my parents, actually. I, I retired back to these to do that. But after they'd both passed away, um, some of my neighbours in my street said, obviously thought I needed to find something new to do now. So they, they advised me to join Cross Case Good Neighbours. And I did that. And uh, I really liked it. And I very soon I realised that a lot of the um, members there do some volunteering. We've got well over 100 members who do volunteering of different sorts. And uh, I, I started to do the befriending then. Uh, I got involved with the Time to Shine project through that because with my scientific background, I was interested in the evaluation that they were doing. And then uh, Joe Horsfall then invited me to become a trustee at Crosscase Good Neighbours. So I was happy to do that because the great thing about volunteering is that, you know, when you've accumulated a lot of experience and skills during your working life, it's nice to be able to give it back, really. Uh, I was a scientist and uh, I used to do lots of regulatory affairs and so uh, preparing documents and things like that. <laughs> it's right up your street. No, it's no problem for me. So, so I'm very happy to do that sort of thing. And I've got all the time in the world because being retired now, I can just decide what I'd like to do, really. And, and it's uh, brilliant to have, you know, that lived experience of being somebody who benefits from the work of the organisation sitting on the board of it. You know, that, I think that's really important. And, you know, all community organisations benefit from having people with very diverse and different experiences, but particularly people who are really connected to the cause. So thank you for doing that and being one of the brilliant number of people across Leeds that keep our sector going. Yes, I, I think that um, the local care partnerships are now beginning to bring the third sector very much uh, into cooperating with with the statutory sectors as well. They've been a great innovation. And, and I'm hoping that the population health planning uh, team that, that's now being set up at uh, Leeds CCG will begin to realise the great value that the third sector gives to the whole Leeds economy. I don't think it's realised enough, actually. Fantastic. Well, David Smith, uh, trustee of Crossgates and District Good Neighbours Scheme, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Steph.
So having heard from David about the fantastic work that's been happening in our communities around the digital divide, we're now going to hear from another friend of Leeds Community Foundation, Stuart Clark, who is co-founder of the Leeds Digital Festival, with a focus on people who are a little bit more tech savvy and are using digital in different ways across the city now. Thanks for joining us, Stuart Clark, co-founder of the festival. Oh, thank you, Steph. Um, so you are a friend to Leeds Community Foundation. Tell us a bit about how you got involved first, Stuart, if you will. Uh, I, I, I think like many of these things, you know, I was, I was aware of the foundation for, for a while and you went to a, one, one or two events and, you know, I, I knew a few people who were you know, quite closely involved in, in it on various uh, committees and, you know, it's one of those things you get invited, you get strong armed, you get persuaded. Um, and, you know, I came along to one of the external affairs committees and thought, you know, I, I could add value, you know, I could, I could, you know, give some time and, 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 and try to do some, some good. Uh, and it's just been great. I've been a member of the committee for about two and a half years. Uh, I can really see a difference that the whole foundation makes, you know, to, to the city and, and just just the sheer numbers of projects that the foundation is involved in, and, and it's just it's just really inspiring, and it, and it's just been great to be to play a very small part in that. Thank you, Stuart. Yeah, everybody who's involved in the foundation is super passionate, aren't they? And uh, very into strong arming people to get involved and see that social impact that takes place across communities. But on to the Leeds Digital Festival. Tell us a little bit more about that and how you. How you got involved in co-founding it? Yeah, I think it all goes back to summer of 2015. Uh, Leeds City Council put on a digital strategy day. They invited about 80 people from uh, around the city, from various large uh, tech companies to uh, startups to marketing agencies, and and from the back of that, a bunch of us got together and thought about what can we do because it's not just about the council or the LEP or the government. Uh, so we, you know, time on the fashion, met in a pub decided to put on a digital festival, you know, not a new idea. And we had the first one in uh, April 2016. And, you know, at the time, you know, looking back, you know, we're not sure we knew what we were doing, but we had about 50 events that year. And it's just grown year on year on year. And last year we had two COVID interrupted festivals. So, you know, we'd, we'd always been 100% physical events in, in the city centre. Last year we had over 400 uh, online events across two festivals. This year is a mix. We've got 304 events and 85 of them are physical in-person events and, and the rest of them are, are online. So it'll be interesting to see how that mix goes. And, and as you say, there's uh, the mix of events. It's just, you know, every year the quality goes up and it's astounding, you know, the, the quality that comes through. And, you know, as you say, you know, whether you're interested in coding, whether you're looking at joining the tech sector as a career, whether you're in fintech, health tech, data, absolutely anything. And, and we also have a number of sort of uh, events where with, with firms and organizations, you, you look at them, you think, well, they're not tech firms, but of course, everybody's using more tech. So we've got uh, the engineering consultancy, Arup, they're doing a, a, a virtual theater with Slum Low Theater Company. You've got Leeds 2023 putting on a, a virtual games jam every day of the festival. So it's so loads of stuff happening across the, the, the whole city. Fantastic. And, you know, I guess from uh, the perspective of those of us less involved in the digital and tech sector, it, it feels like COVID-19 has really kind of accelerated and been a positive thing for the sector in some ways. Is that your sense of it, Stuart? It is. I mean, you know, over the last five years, year on year, there's been growth in the tech sector in the, in the city and the, and the region. But but yes, this, this last 18 months has really seen a, a massive growth. And you know, every company and every person in the tech sector that I talk to, you know, you always get around to the fact that they've got vacancies because they're growing so fast. You know, we need we need more people to come into to the sector, and, and hopefully that growth within uh, within the tech sector in the region has has offset or will offset some of the issues we've seen in other sectors over the last 18 months, particularly sort of retail and, and hospitality. So. So it's great to have that, you know, high performing, well, fast growth sector. Yeah. And, and as you know, we're all about reducing inequalities and making connections. So, you know, I have to ask but for the, the people who are impacted by those difficult challenges in other sectors, you know, how can people who are involved in the digital and tech sector give back if they want to? Well, I think there's a couple of things. I think 
part of it is about how to bring more people into the sector. And, you know, going back four or five years ago, a lot of the firms were, were chasing the mythical graduate with two years experience. And yeah, many of those came from, you know, a, a privileged backgrounds. So I think what we've seen is lots of companies uh, sponsoring apprenticeships, which which really uh, brings more people from a diverse background, working with other universities and colleges, uh, uh, not just the sort of top two or three w within the region. And also, I think one of the differences that's, that's really made a difference over the last few years is organizations such as Generation, Leeds Code, uh, North Coders, that really push out into communities that are underrepresented within the tech sector and often free or discounted training courses to bring people in. And on the flip side of that, I think there's more social awareness in the sector as well. So individuals and companies are looking around at their own organizations and thinking, well, perhaps we don't represent the, the cities and the communities in, in which we live. What can we do about that? And some of that is you know, being, making more positive steps to bring people into to training courses and things. Another is, you know, let's look around and, and look at uh, organizations that are doing some really good work anyway uh, and seeing how we can support those. And, you know, and again, in the last couple of years, I've probably had more conversations with people about the foundation that they've initiated instead of me going and saying, hey, let me talk, talk to you about this amazing organization I'm involved with. So I think, I think there is much more social awareness. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, we've had some fantastic conversations with organisations about not kind of reinventing the wheel, not putting money or tech into communities where projects and work already exist, but using us as that go-between to really understand what's happening in the city around the digital divide and around inequality and make sure that, you know, that the difference you want to make is the difference you're going to make. Lovely to speak to you, Stuart. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Well, I'd just like to say, I mean, one of the key things is, you know, and you know, I mentioned one of the reasons why I wanted to get involved with, with the foundation, because some of the people that, that the foundation's helping with in Leeds, you know, 40 years ago when I was growing up in Wakefield, I would have been one of those people. So, you know, and it's really important that we all give back as much as we can. And sometimes that's, that's money, sometimes that's time, sometimes that's, that's influence and other things. So it's really important to, to, to everybody thinks about their position in, in society and how they can help others. And as I mentioned about people being more socially aware, and that's a real key thing from just, just even three or four years ago, I think people are thinking, you know, how can we make our communities in, in which we live fairer and more inclusive? So I'd, I'd recommend anybody to get involved with the foundation in whichever way they can. We will certainly let people know how to do that later on in the podcast. But um, for now, Stuart Clark of Platform and co-founder of Leeds Digital Festival. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Steph. Well, it's been a real privilege as ever to meet some inspiring folk doing great things across our brilliant city of Leeds. COVID-19 has exacerbated the digital divide. Many of the community groups we partner with are seeing real challenges as a result. However, much of it has also been positive, creating wealth and energy in the tech sector, as we heard from Stuart, but also new opportunities to learn and develop new skills and connections, as we heard from David. If you're out there thinking, I could do more to make a difference, or my business could really make an impact as a member of Leeds Community Foundation to make Leeds more inclusive, get in touch with us on membership at leedscf.org.uk. Thank you for listening. And thank you so much, Ben, David and Stuart, for joining us for this episode of Give Love Leads. If you enjoyed this episode, take a couple of seconds to rate it on your favourite podcast platform. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and subscribe to our newsletter on Leeds Community Foundation. You can also visit our website at leedscf.org.uk. Feel free to email us at info at leedscf.org.uk. Speak to you soon for the next episode of Give Love Leads.